Hi everyone and thanks for clicking on to this video. Today we are going to be covering the case of Icelandiker John Johnson. Forty-one-year-old John is a taxi driver from Iceland who had arrived in Dublin on Friday, February 8th, 2019, and checked into the Bonington Hotel in Whitehall on his own. His fiance Jana, was supposed to be joining him, but had a passport issue and could not travel until Saturday. The couple had booked a 10-day stay in Dublin, which would include a three-day poker tournament. John and Jana were both avid gamblers, but as gambling is actually illegal in Iceland, this was a nice treat to come away for a little holiday and hopefully make some money. As their couple's holiday was delayed, John wanted to make the most of his time on his own and the first day on holiday, and so he booked himself into an unregistered poker game that was going on in the hotel on the Friday night. The next morning, after having resolved the issue with her passport, Jana arrived at the hotel to find John asleep in their hotel room. The couple are believed to have had an intense conversation before Jana left John in the room and went down to the hotel restaurant to have a coffee. This was around 10 a.m. on Saturday, the 9th of February in 2019. At around 11 a.m., John left the hotel room and proceeded to walk out of the Bonington Hotel, with only the clothes he was wearing and his payment cards. However, his passport, mobile phone, suitcase, and the rest of his clothes were all left in the hotel room. John is a smoker, and so it is believed that he had possibly gone down for a cigarette and a stroll. Jana returned to their hotel room, but having waited in their room for a number of hours for John to return, she became worried and got in contact with hotel security and staff. This would trigger the beginning of an emotional and exhausting search for John Johnson. The last images of John show him leaving the hotel shortly after 11am. He is seen on CCTV turning right and walking north on the Swords Road. After two days and still no sign of John, 12 of John's relatives and friends flew over to Dublin to help search for him. You see, in Iceland, it's very common for a SARS team to be set up when somebody goes missing or in certain situations like this. Locals and SAR specialists from Iceland searched hundreds of kilometres hanging flyers and posters, while a team back home worked on the social media campaign. One of the searches, cooperated by John's brother, had found a cigarette butt and a pack of the same brand on the Grace Park Road in Drumcondra. And although this is the same brand that John smokes, no further information was released on this. John's brother, who gave a number of interviews to Irish media, described him as a nice, caring, reliable and stable guy who was healthy and fit both physically and mentally and had no history of making reckless decisions or wanting to escape his life. He was a proud father of four and had just renewed his taxi licence back home in Iceland. His brother also added that they had a very close relationship and that John was very open about his finances. If he was in need of money, he would have asked for help from a member of his family. Certain information reported to the Gardaí and the police in Iceland showed that John had lost €4,000 in the poker game which he took part in on the Friday night before he went missing. And it is possible that John could have had cash on him on the day that he left the hotel and he could have gone to meet somebody to pay off this debt. John's phone had been known to have problems with its battery and so he could have left his phone in the room because it was not working properly. This could have caused him to panic because no one could contact him and he could have gone out to find someone from the game the night before. It was obvious that John had fully intended on returning to the hotel as he had left so much behind and took the hotel room key with him. An article which is up for dispute was published by the newspaper The Independent in October 2020. It mentioned that the €4,000 that John had lost belonged to an Icelandic criminal and although John was not involved in criminality himself, this large sum of cash belonged to a criminal. 
The money was supposed to be used for poker registration purposes for a number of players, but instead it is claimed that John lost it in Friday night's game. It is also alleged that when he began to lose, he tried to leave, but was not allowed and was given a few slaps by other card players, also believed to be foreign nationals. The alleged source for the independent newspaper has also stated that John went to meet with the criminal whose money he had lost on that Saturday. What happened next is unclear, but it's been suggested that John was killed by accident after the criminal lost his temper. John's family say the police informant doesn't exist and, at best, the story is based on unreliable information. They are also considering legal action against the Irish journalist and the newspaper. In a statement released by a representative of the John Johnson family, early morning Sunday, the Independent published a very detailed and disturbing article about John's disappearance. In the article, the reporter claims that John's family was made aware of the information detailed in the article by an informant. This is utterly untrue as no such information has been received by the family, nor have we received any leads from any imprisoned informant. Furthermore, our contacts at Garda and the Icelandic police have confirmed to members of the family that they haven't received any information as described in the article, nor did they communicate any such information to the reporter, Ali Bracken or The Independent. So the story is at best based on information from an unreliable source or at worst completely made up. Needless to say, the publishing of this story in The Independent and subsequently in Icelandic media has caused John's family unnecessary harm. The reporter Ali Bracken has shown grave negligence by writing an unsubstantiated story in such a delicate case and shown complete disrespect and disregard to John's family by publishing it. So has the Icelandic media that ran the story. Jana declined to comment when contacted on the latest developments in Iceland. John's sister, Anna Hildur, also declined to comment. Gardi at Ballymun continued to actively investigate the case. Gardi are being kept abreast of developments by police in Iceland and await further updates. The family have hired a private investigator named Liam Brady to do his own investigation on the case. He may have a possible lead and hopes to interview someone who is currently in jail abroad in relation to the case. John was last seen wearing black jeans, a black padded jacket, a black t-shirt with printed white letters and picture on the front, and black sneakers with a white base. If you have any information pertaining to this case, please get in touch using the following information. I will also leave the links in the description box below. I hope you found this video informative and please just remember I am only relaying information that I have found on the internet about this case from various sources and I am compiling them together into a video for entertainment purposes only. I will always encourage you to do your own research. So that's everything I have so far on the John Johnson case. Again, I apologize if I am pronouncing his name wrong or any names in this video. If there is any updates on the case, I will be sure to let you know on this channel. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.